Hey everyone, welcome back to Full Throttle Driving Academy. I'm Brian. I'm Dana. We're back with a brand new format. Dana's gonna explain what the heck we're up to here. We've gotten really good feedback on this, so we're gonna keep it up for a bit. So um, Brian, as you know, is incredible at narrating through his races and sort of coaching others through that through the race. And I have decided to start asking some questions about what were you thinking here? And people are really enjoying this comment, this uh, format. I'm gonna try not to take up too much time commenting, but we will be doing that throughout this as well. So Brian's gonna narrate, I'm gonna ask some questions. We're also trying a new format with the smaller windshield here on the screen so that you can see hands and gauges, which um, some people find really super helpful. Love your feedback on that as well. Would you like a bigger view of the track or do you wanna see the hands and gauges? So um, that's how the format is gonna work. And today's race is at NASA's UMC event on the West Track here in Utah. Look at the snow on the mountains. Racing in March in Utah is just so fun. Uh, I jumped into this race on a whim. It was a Saturday. I just decided to go to the track. Didn't expect to actually jump in the car and race. Didn't have any tires. Um, so I was running around in the practice sessions quite a bit off the pace. Luckily for us, and I'm very grateful, the guy here in the white car offered to sell us some of his used takeoff tires from his race at Coda. So very, very happy that he did that. And this was my first time racing on this configuration against any of these competitors. I don't know their tendencies. And let's just quickly go through the cars. I qualified um, one, two, three, four, what is it? Five, six, the Wolf up front. This is a Wolf prototype car. Qualified well in advance of everyone else. This is a 992 cup car, the gray one. Should be the fastest one out there. These two next cars, the green and the white, are the same as me. Um, the green car has slightly modified suspension and all the cars around me are obviously running brand new tires. That's just what you do. I didn't have that opportunity. And, and you said the same as me, but you're driving a... Oh yeah, what are we in? 991.2. <laughs> Porsche cup car, 2018. And I want to mention, you've got some rain coming. So what are your thoughts? First of all, is it raining when you start the race or do you know it's coming? The forecast called for about 50% chance of rain by around 4 p.m. This race started at around 3.45, 3.50. So, so you know the rain is coming. I, it, so you go with rain tires or you go with slicks? We all went with slicks. We all went with slicks and right. it ends up proving to be a bad decision <laughs> because this You've race- You've made that bad decision before. <laughs> yes. I have raced this car in the rain, torrential downpour. I was going about 20 miles per hour around the track and I got lapped three times. Um, by people with rain tires. By people with rain tires. It's that big of a deal. All right, we're coming around the last corner here. This is again, West Track Configuration at Utah Motorsports Campus. So what am I thinking? I'm thinking the Wolf and the 992 Cup car should jump out to the lead. The green flag is gonna be up here to the right. You're looking for any head movement or shoulder movement. And the green goes and I get a pretty good jump here. Um, the Wolf makes a big mistake on the first corner and locks up the wheels. Too much braking, didn't need to do that. Should have dove to the inside, easily would have been in the lead. But now it allowed me to jump into third place. Nice job. It's nice so far. So I'm now stuck behind 992 Cup Car. Once his tires warm up, he should just check out. His car is significantly faster um, in every way than the, than the car win. It's the next generation up. The green car got a phenomenal start and uh, is in the, uh, roughly the same car that we are in. So talk about this configuration. It's one of four configurations at Utah Motorsports. And so this is the West. And uh, how do you feel about the West configuration? Well, the West is among the shorter configurations. I like it because the lap times are around, you know, 130, 135. And you get more laps in the race. It's technical. It's uh, the short, the straightaways are, are really, really short. So it rewards, um, you know, it's a more technical track, which I, I tend to like. All right, I noticed you're not hitting your apexes like you usually do. So what's up with that? Are you holding somebody <laughs> off behind you or what? Yeah, so actually I'm playing defense right now and that means I'm trying to take away this guy from passing me. Unfortunately, the wolf is behind me because he locked up his wheels. He should be in front of me easily. I'm trying to actually let him buy me. Okay. 
believe it or not, I want him to pass me because he should catch those other two cars in front and pass them easily and win the race. Okay. But he's not, come on, dude, pass me, pass me, pass me. He, Can't give him a little he, point he, by like I, we used to do. I, I left the door wide open and he just didn't quite get a good enough exit on that last corner. So now I'm thinking, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not able to drive the optimal time trial line to catch the two cars in front because this guy is all over me and and I'm not he's not predictable because I've already seen him lock up his tires once on the inside of a corner so now I'm wondering is he gonna dive bomb me right here going into this hairpin and sure enough watch him fly right by Woo! later so again he locked up on the braking zone and I know I gotta stay away yeah. Because Keep your that's, distance. that's dangerous, right? Um, By the way, we need a rear view mirror thingy so that we can show people what's behind you because I know you're driving in your mirrors a lot. We're talk we talk about that on several different races where you've got somebody right on your hiney and you're driving in your mirrors, but we can't see it when we're watching the replay. So we'll need to invest in a rear mirror there, or yeah. rear camera. Absolutely. In this race, the rear view mirror would be where it's at. So I'm basically, now I'm trying to just go as fast as I can. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to hold him off, but I'm trying to force him to pass me where I don't have to slow down, which is going to be hopefully on this main straightaway coming up after this corner. I'm going to take a wide line here. I'm going to try to show him I'm giving you room. Please go on my inside and pass me right now. Now, I don't know a wolf and are, are they faster on the streets, higher horsepower? What, tell me a little bit about it. I don't know this car particularly. I, I know that um, I was told this car is modified with a bigger motor. It has, as you can see, it's a prototype car. It's got tremendous downforce. And cornering ability the, for sure. The mechanical grip is better. It's super lightweight. It's but he just, too is missing his apexes. He's, he, absolutely. Right. I mean, this- I hope he's not watching this and <laughs> being offended, but. He, he's, he's probably a, you know, a good solid intermediate um, driver who jumped into a really, really fast car. He's probably improving, you know, every race. Right. And he qualified on the pole. So, you know, technically, if he just drives a clean race, he should be able to pass those two cars and win this race very easily. All right. And <clears> I <throat> hate this corner. Is this a corner I'm thinking of going as number six? Yeah, it's usually number six. It's a nasty double apex hairpin that's kind of off camber, bad so traction. talk about how you do that one because I just, I hate that corner. <laughs> On that one, I like to angle in and break in a straight line and cut the distance. I try to take it a little tighter because there are marbles on the outside of that one. Okay. And on this one, I, you know, if I tried running over the curb, as you saw there. That was upsetting the car. These cup cars are really stiff. In a spec boxer, which I'm used to driving on this track, I run all over the curbs, but this car doesn't love the It's also the track curbs. dependent, though, because I was running all over the curbs at the S's or the curbs at the S's at Button Willow, Button Willow. And, and that was okay. It didn't really disrupt the car. Good point. These curbs are really steep um, and they do tend to upset the cup car. So now, is it raining yet? It's not, but yeah. now watch, I'm driving a wacky line. I'm, I, did you see how I angled in and cut, I, I turned to the left on that first corner and then broke in a straight line and I dove to the inside yep. early. Now I'm playing defense. The 991.2 Cup car who sold me his used tires is right on my butt. He is all over me for the rest of this race. So now what I'm doing is moving to the left at right after I exit to take away the inside line. Um, I'm gonna run over the curbs here. Again, I'm taking away the inside pass. I'm running a little bit tighter line on the exit as well because now I am all about playing defense because now that he's all over me, I have two choices. Either I can let him pass me because he's on brand new tires. He should be a little bit faster than me, at least, especially in the first five or six laps. We also don't know this driver. I, I don't know him. I know he drives a support. I know him. I met him a few times. He drives the Porsche Sprint Challenge. He's been doing oh. very well. He drives all over the country. He's got a you know, he's got two cars, two cup cars. He has a spare car. He's got a lot of funds. You know, he's, he's basically very well situated to, to do this class. And, um, I was just happy. He sold me his used tires, frankly. Yeah. Just I got lost it there. Got really loose there on the exit. The tires are still coming up to temp. I'm still getting used to the slicks. These are Yokohama's. They get better as the race goes on. My best lap, as you can see is lap six. Oh, that was, that was my best lap. Even though I screwed up the exit, 
I still had a 131.7. So if and you I said you're going to FF here, you're going to fast forward through a few laps coming yeah, up here in a bit. I think I'm going to speed this up to 1.5 times. So it's not like I'm driving that fast. It's just, we're going to go faster now. So the race doesn't bore everyone so to bore tears, you. but now you can see, okay, I'm driving the middle of the track. Still, I'm taking the inside away. I'm going to try to force him to try to pass me on the outside or do an over under move. And really at this point, I'm trying to hope it doesn't. Well, actually I'm hoping it does start raining because that will kind of neutralize his new tire advantage a little bit. Um, now is anyone on rain tires? No, but he's on rain tires. And the other thing is they started about, I'd say 15 cars in a class behind us that started maybe 10, 15 seconds uh, after us. So you're going to start lapping them? We're going to start lapping them, which is great because if this guy's all over me, look, that, that lap was a, what, a 133, second and a half slower roughly than the previous, because now I'm not driving the optimal. You're still hitting your apex. Time trial line. You're doing a pretty good time trial well, line. Well, I'm in my mirrors. So yeah. what I'm doing is sometimes if he misses a corner and I pull away, if I get a two car gap on him or so, then see that time he was right behind me. So I had to stay in the middle, middle. of the track. Yep. This time he's right behind me. So I'm staying in the middle of the track. If I get a better exit than him and he makes a slight mistake and I pull away a little bit, then I drive the racing line. Like right there, that's my normal time trial line. So he's not going to be able to pass me here. This is very difficult to pass on. Same here, this corner, very difficult to pass anybody on. Same here, this corner, he's not going to get me here. He could try to pass me on this short straight, but I'm going to take away the inside and I'm going to run over the curb. And so now he's going to have to pass me by getting a better exit on that corner and pass me on the straightaway. But I'm now immediately moving to the left. So he's going to have to try to pass me on the outside. Now you do this enough and you start getting fatigued, right? Mentally, it's hard to hold somebody off who's, you know, he's probably a half a second a lap faster than me at this point in the race if, if he were to pull ahead. So it's hard work to hold somebody off like this. And well, it's hard to drive in your mirrors. It really is. That's when you start making yeah. mistakes and you're getting fatigued. Luckily, there's no one in front of me. So I'm only having to pay attention to him Right after I exit a corner, I glance at him in my mirror. Right before the braking zone, I'm glancing to see if he's gonna go inside, outside, or stay right behind me. And then in the corner, I'm not looking at all at him. I'm focused on driving. So as soon as I start braking and start turning in, I forget all about him. Okay. But I know where he is before I start braking every single time. So you were really <clears throat> big on showing your hands and the gauges. And I'm curious what you wanna talk through or what you want people to really focus on Obviously the braking, we just see it come on right there. There's right. the throttle. Right, and you'll notice the throttle is, when I'm at full throttle, it's going blank on there, but yeah. that, if it's blank, that means I'm at full throttle. So I think it's important for people to see the braking technique. You can see how hard I'm braking, when I'm braking. You can also see if I start releasing the brake pedal and start turning in, that's trail braking. And all these techniques come together. You know, you're, you're out there performing this orchestra with the, with your pedals and your hands. You should also see the hands. See, I'm doing a lot of corrections. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> too much carbonation, I guess. <laughs> so you can see the raindrops. Mm, the okay. windshield. I, now, I've only driven in the rain twice. The, the windshield wiper button on this car. You've only driven this car in the this rain This car. Twice. You push a button on the steering wheel and it makes the wiper go once. And I didn't even know, you have to hold the button down for like three seconds for the windshield wiper to stay on. So I was like learning that. Yeah, it took me a while to figure that out too. I'm out there on the track, like, why isn't this wet? Things then, we didn't learn when we bought that car. Yeah, and the wiper also was old. I think it's probably from 2018. Well, it's just smearing the water back and forth. So my visibility is starting to get Pretty, pretty bad. All right, visibility is getting bad, but it looks like you've still got some grip on those slicks. Uh, well, I'm doing a lot of correction on the exits. You can see my hands. Yeah. But I was surprised. I mean, the grip. Because, man, when I was out in the rain recently, it, it was just like being on ice. I, I think because there are so many cars out here driving this line, the track Trying is staying a little drier and it, there's no puddling yet. But the rain is getting more intense. 
It's also really cold outside. It's like 40 degrees, I think. Uh. So our tires are obviously not gonna have quite as much grip as if it was warm. So now we're lapping in some traffic. There's a GT4. It's cool, you can see the Garmin in here too, if you're looking, if you're looking at that. So you can see mm -hmm. that you were quite a bit slower on that lap, it's showing you the, the right. red. And now the trick for traffic is to use the traffic to my advantage because the guy is still right on me, the white car. And if I can pass the car right before the turn in point, I can make that car, I, I can double the width of my car because I've got two side by side. The guy behind me can't do anything. So I'm using these cars kind of to build a wall to block him. So oh, that, that one, you know, he's not going to be able to, he'll follow me as best as he can, but I'm trying to kind of juke him a little bit and be a little bit unpredictable with when and how I'm going to pass these, these, these cars. Now, when you say you're being unpredictable, I get the logic in that, but it also sounds a little bit dangerous since, you know, being predictable is an important characteristic of a race car driver. Yeah. The, the cars I'm passing, I mean, I'm, I'm presenting myself and I know, but when I say I'm predictable, I guess I mean with the throttle, I'm trying to speed up and slow down a little bit on the straightaway to time my pass. So I am trying to, in some of these straightaways, I'm slowing down a little bit earlier and breaking a little bit earlier to try to get myself a little bit more next to the cars I'm lapping to again, create that wall. It's, it's really tricky though. Cause it's, you know, it's so hard to predict when you're going to pass a car exactly. And also what that car is going to do. Yeah. You know, but now the rain's really coming down. It's lap 13 out of 16. I think I got a gap on him, um, in that lap traffic. And now I'm trying to really concentrate but he, he's gonna close it up again, he catches me. And I think what's going on, if you're the first car in the rain, you're the one who's testing the traction, right? If the car's right behind you, he knows he can match my braking point and my turn in speed. All he has to do is kind of follow me. And if he does just a tiny bit faster than me, he's gonna catch me. I'm the one who's having to test everything because I'm out here all by myself and he's following me. It's pretty difficult actually I yeah. was really concentrating hard I was trying to feel look at how my hands are usually my hands are pretty quiet but I'm my hands are all over the place in this race and even without traffic your times are significantly slower way slower I mean the rain you know I think we end up doing like 138s 137 laps yeah. you know five or six seconds slower and it just gets worse and worse as you go but um I'm still, you know, defending him. So what it's kind of nice that there isn't somebody right in front of you. My biggest fear when I drive in the rain is that either they're going to slide out or I'm going to slide out and somebody's going to hit each other and we're going to, you know, pinballs. Right. Pinballs. We do end up coming up to more traffic coming up here relatively quickly. And the punchline is on the last lap on the white flag lap. I make a tiny mistake right there on that corner on lap, uh, I think it's lap 16. I, I slide out just, just a tad and I give him an opening and he ends up passing me. That's scary too. There's a wall right there. He passes me like on the walls. inside on the last lap. And then I try like crazy to pass him back and I feel like I almost got him, but you kind of away the, the kind of giving alert it away, here. but there is a there is a slight spin out coming on the very last lap and two more laps. So another prototype car up here. These guys are really nursing their cars. Um, so we're, we're going to catch them, and you know, most of these very few people on the West Coast have a lot of experience driving in the rain, including us, right? It just you love it though. I, I do. I, I don't. This particular race, um, you know, this car doesn't give you a lot of warning. It breaks free. It really snaps. It has so much torque and power. I should have probably shifted here shorter and gone into third gear on these corners instead of second gear. Then I could have put the power down a little bit more smoothly. Yeah, but in the rain, that's a little scary too, especially with this car. We've got so much torque that I find if I am in too low of a gear, I'm going to spin, spin out. Right. Especially that's how I spun that last time in the rain. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I should have shifted sooner. I oh, I'm been, sorry. I should have been up uh, a gear up higher. A gear. Okay, sorry, I was backwards. But I'm still now. He's right behind me again. You can see just by my line. I'm driving in the middle of the track. I'm running over the curbs. I'm I'm defending him heavily. 
And now it's just like, please get this race over with. <laughs> like, just give me, give me the checkered flag already. Um, so he's right on your hiney. Yeah, he's. I wish we could he, see it. He's just all over me. All right, so you're still driving in your mirrors. Thankfully, you don't have a lot of traffic up, up ahead of you. I mean, if I had beat him, up. if I had beat him, I wonder if he would have regretted selling me the used tires. <laughs> Because there's so much money on the line in these things. Yeah, we, we we could win a sticker. Here's where I blow it. I give a little slide here. Look. Ah, just that minor, minor slip gives him an opening on the inside. Look at that. There he is. Yeah. And, and I now I, right get, I get stuck. I can't go because now I got this guy. Now he's... He, and he's going to use watch. that guy too. He won't drive the correct line. He's playing defense on me. If I, I should have let him pass me sooner in retrospect. I should have let him pass me on like lap five. I could have ridden this guy and forced him to make mistakes. Yeah, but you were saying because he had better tires, brand new tires, I, you didn't want to let him go ahead. Maybe if I had waited till maybe like five or six and his tires just got a little bit worse, I, I could stay with him because of the draft. And see, look, he's driving, and now I spin. Now, were you thinking of passing him right there? Yeah, I was gonna try to pass him on the inside, but I hit too much curb and I hit some gravel. Are you worried when you pass on the inside like that? Aren't you worried they're going to turn into you? Well, he came back and that's why I had to go even deeper in the corner. He right. probably didn't expect it. And I'm not going to risk a collision, especially in this club racing. So it's just not worth it. So I, I made a mistake, spun out. I waited until all the cars were clear before I came back on the track. Excuse me. Now I'm going to limp home. And I think I ended up in fifth place. Oh, really? Even with that? Even with the spin out. Yeah, so it, I think that's a good race, right? I mean, yeah. it's fun, learning experience, used tires. In the rain. In the rain. Cold Great. weather. So we'll come around and, um, you know, hope you guys enjoy this. We're at Full Throttle Driving Academy is our website, our YouTube channel. We'd love if you subscribe. Please subscribe. That tells us if we're on the right track. And comment. Let us know what you think of this format where we're asking questions and going back and forth and Brian's mm -hmm. narrating. He does a great job of that. So let us know what you think of the format and uh, and also the screen. Do you like the smaller windshield with the gauges and the hands? We will try and get a rear camera so that we can see what's going on behind us. Thanks for watching. Bye.